One thing that composers of the classical era and composers of 8-bit video game soundtracks have in common is the tendency to write melodies that clearly express a harmony. Meaning, by listening to just the melody on its own, you could infer or even hear the sound of a clear chord progression that would go along with it. For the former, it was likely due to the novelty of harmony as a concept, combined with the abundance of pieces written for single-note instruments, unable to play chords at all, but still needing the music to create a sense of movement. For the latter, it was the restrictions on the number of pitches that could be produced at one time by the hardware. If you only have three voices to work with, you're probably going to need the melody to supply some harmonic information if you want the music to have a chord progression at all. There are lots of ways to establish the sound of a chord with a single note line, ranging from simple to complex, and today I want to look at how it's done and to what effect using the soundtrack of Kirby's Block Ball for the Game Boy. If you don't know the music at all, don't worry. The soundtrack's full of great little gems, and not knowing the melodies beforehand will actually make it easier for me to prove my points. So, without further ado, let's get to it. How could a melody possibly sound like a chord? Well, let's look at it this way. A chord is a collection of three or more notes. If you play these notes all at once, it's a chord. If you play them one after the other instead, it's called an arpeggio, or a broken chord. The only difference between an arpeggio and a melody is putting it into a rhythm and a musical context. The map screen theme from Kirby's Block Ball uses a melody made entirely of triads broken up in a rhythmic way. It's pretty rare to find a melody that just uses straight up arpeggios, though. Some classics from other Kirby games will use broken triads as a core part of their melodies, like Green Greens, or the Gourmet Race theme. But there's always at least one or two notes outside of the chord added in that make the melody sound more, well, melodic. So what notes can we add, and how, to make our broken chords sound more like melodies? I like to use what I call the triad plus one method. It's exactly what it sounds like. If you take the notes of a triad in any inversion and add one passing note moving from one of the chord tones to the next, you get a four note figure that starts to sound more fluid and melodic than just an arpeggio, while still expressing the same chord just as clearly. One, two, three, five is a common example, as we just heard in the gourmet race theme. But 1345 or 3561 work just as well in any inversion or direction as long as the added note connects two of the notes of the triad. That's our triad plus one. In Kirby's Block Ball's Stage 1 theme, we see a 3451 figure outlining an F triad before moving to a 5321 figure outlining a C triad. If you had to guess the chord progression that goes with this melody, you'd probably guess F to C. And once we add in the bass line and the arpeggiated chord accompaniment, you'd find that you are correct. With even a simple chord progression and this triad plus one technique, you can make some pretty catchy melodies. However, we can be even less explicit and still evoke the sound of a particular chord. If we take our triad plus one figure and take away the note from our triad that isn't being connected by a passing tone, we get two chord tones and a passing tone between them. It doesn't spell out a whole triad, so it can be a little more ambiguous than our earlier techniques, but it's still more than capable of carrying a clear harmony. The stage three theme from Kirby's Block Ball is a perfect example. The first bar walks stepwise from G sharp to B and back. G sharp and B could belong to either E major or G sharp minor triads, but the A natural in between them makes it lean more towards E major. The A natural over E major would be the fourth, which is a much more stable sound than the flat second over a G sharp minor chord. The next bar shows a straight up arpeggio down a D major chord. The third bar is just the same as the first bar, but moved down a third, this time walking between the notes E and G sharp. This could be either the root and third of E major, or the flat third and fifth of a C sharp minor triad. The last bar of the phrase walks up from F sharp to B. Another example of a two chord tone figure filled in with passing tones, only this time there are just as many passing tones as chord tones. 
you'd think that would make it tough to gauge what the harmony is being implied, which notes are supposed to be chord tones and which aren't. But the first and last notes of figures like this always carry the most harmonic weight, so this walk up is going to imply the sound of a B chord. Listen to this melody and try and hear what chord progression would fit underneath. To my ear, I hear an E, D, E, B progression. And when we add in the other two voices, this is just about what we get, with the third bar harmonized as a C sharp minor rather than E major. When you have limited voices to work with, it's incredibly helpful to be able to establish the bulk of the harmony and the melody with the same single note line. There are times, however, when you may not want the chord progression implied by your melody to fit exactly with the other parts of the piece. Take this four bar melody here. This whole phrase is basically implying A flat major. What? But there's a chromatic note in two of the four bars. How can a chromatic scale imply a chord? The same way the walk up from F sharp to B we saw in our last example implied a B major chord. Because the important structural notes of the figure were the first and last ones and the rest was just filler, and the only triads that contain a B and an F sharp note are B chords, this little scalar walk up implies the sound of some kind of B chord. Adding a chromatic note into the mix to fill in a walk up from A flat to C doesn't change the important structural first and last notes of the figure, it just makes the melody sound more lighthearted and goofy. Either a 1, 2, sharp 2, 3, or 3, 4, sharp 4, 5 will work to imply a major chord with this lighthearted sound, and this is a move that you actually see in Mario soundtracks a lot. So these first two bars are using chromatic filler between two chord tones to create an A-flat major sound. The third bar is another example of our triad plus one technique, a descending 5-4-3-1 move, and the fourth bar daisy chains this A-flat note into the start of a 1-2-3-1 figure, another configuration of two chord tones with filler in between them. If we listen to the whole melody, it sounds like this. It doesn't really feel like it goes anywhere harmonically, does it? It definitely just sits around an A-flat major chord the whole time. Even so, it's still an interesting melody because of these little filler notes in between the chord tones. It's really these little details that bring a melody to life. Without them, you get something that sounds like it belongs on Sesame Street. So now you might be wondering how this phrase is harmonized in Kirby's Block Ball. Is it really just four bars of A flat? Nope. We get a simple 1, 4, 5, 1 progression underneath. A flat to D flat to E flat to A flat. It's a relatively common technique for a melody to outline the tonic chord over top of changing harmony, and the clash between these two mismatched harmonic ideas can make even the most simple chord progressions sound pretty cool. Another great example of this is the file select theme. In it, this melodic phrase sticks to an F major chord the entire way through, leaping up from the fifth to the root to the fifth, followed by a triad plus one figure with this descending 5-4-3-1, ending off with another triad plus one figure with this 3-1-6-5. Isolated, the melody is lively and energetic, but harmonically completely motionless. When we bring in the other voices, however, we see a more interesting progression. F to G7 to C7 sus to F. What's cool about this is that there are notes in the melody that don't work with the harmony. 
Sitting on a C above a G7 chord is one of those things that you learn are wrong in music theory class. Still, the harmonic clarity of the line makes it feel super strong, and so even though it doesn't really work with the harmony, it doesn't really bother you as a listener unless you're really trying to pick out that clash. Outlining the tonic F triad so clearly gives this melody the strength and independence to stand up to any number of angry theory professors. The implied sound of a triad over top of a different harmony can add up to a colorful extended chord as well. In the stage 7 theme, the melody sticks closely to the notes of a D major triad with some passing tones sprinkled in between. Listen to just the melody and see what chords you would assume come in underneath. If you were thinking G major 7 to F sharp minor 7 to G7 over F to D major 7, well, you must have heard the tune before. Placing a D triad over a G chord like this brings out the beautiful color of a G major 9 chord, a voicing that you wouldn't think you'd be able to make with just three voices at your disposal. reminded you of any other video game soundtracks, let that be proof enough that this technique is pretty commonly used and that it definitely works. Now let's bump things up to the next level. Sophisticated melodies will not just evoke the sound of a particular chord in any given bar, but will capture the essence of a progression or cadence. See, for any functional chord progression, there's a set of voice leading that makes the progression work. The fourth resolving down to the third, and the seventh resolving up to the root, are what define the 5-7 to 1 cadence. For a minor 4 to 1, the flat 6th resolving down to the 5th is paramount. Every chord resolution you can think of is based off of specific voice leading because, historically, our whole conception of chords is derived from patterns that emerged in polyphonic compositions, or music written for multiple independent voices. It's really handy to be able to collapse a bunch of voice leading ideas into a single formula, but if you learn your voice leading well, you can use that knowledge to level up your melodies. For a simple example, take the ending to the stage 1 theme in Kirby's Block Ball. We're coming out of the key of C and resolving to the key of A major, and to do this we use a 4-5-1 cadence. D major 7 to E7 to A add 2. If you were going to write this progression out as a collection of individual voices, you'd be sure to use the proper voice leading moving from each chord to the next. The A in our D chord should move down a half step to the G sharp in our E chord, which should then resolve back up to A for our final A chord. The D in our E7 should move down a half step to the C sharp in our tonic A. Or maybe we start with an E triad and the E moves down to D halfway through the bar before resolving to our C sharp. That's a really nice sound. Now we don't get any of this voice leading in the accompaniment of the actual track, but the melody picks out this important motion and incorporates it into the line. We start on a D note over a D chord, drop down to an A, and then move down to a G sharp moving into the E chord. Then we leap up to an E note and walk down E, D, C sharp as we resolve to our A chord. The melody is just one held note over this A chord. In no way does it outline an A major triad, but even without the accompaniment, the implied harmony of this melody could not be more clear thanks to the skilled use of the essential voice leading of the 4-5-1 cadence. Without the harmony, you could feel the key change from C major to A major clear as day. And that brings us to the final level of this video. Once you've got your voice leading down and you know how to use it in your melodic writing, you can tackle a technique that I am officially dubbing melodic pivot notes. Just like with pivot chords, chords that belong to two different keys used to smooth the transition from one key to the other, melodic pivot notes can be used to change keys with ease. Towards the end of the game's title theme, we see this melodic phrase in the key of A-flat. 
The first two beats of the measure outline B flat and G notes, two chord tones of an E flat chord that lead into a 3 2 1 walk down from C to A flat. This is a nice melodic representation of a 5 to 1 E flat to A flat cadence. Only, this isn't exactly what happens. Instead of ending on an A flat, we land on an A natural. See, while a C, B flat, A flat melody is a simple way to outline an A flat major chord, a C, B flat, A is the exact voice leading used for a 5 7 to 1 cadence in the key of F. C7 to F major. The first two notes of each example are the exact same even though they're in totally different keys, so using this kind of phrase as a bridge between the keys of A flat and F major makes the transition feel well earned. <laughs> Let's put together everything we've talked about so far into one last example. Towards the end of the stage 2 theme we get this melody in the key of A-flat major. It's not quite as clear as our earlier examples, but almost every bar does establish an A-flat major tonality by using two chord tones with a passing tone in between. The few exceptions are this 2-5-1 bar, which roughly implies a 5 to 1 move, the following run down an A-flat minor scale, and the second last bar which outlines a D-flat chord by way of this melodic embellishment of the root, followed by a 1-2-3-5 figure. Listen to the melody and see if you can guess what chords should go underneath. We successfully capture the sound of an A-flat triad, use voice leading to imply some resolutions like this 2-5-1 bar or the 5-4-3 resolution after it, and we see our tonic A-flat note and the fifth E-flat used as melodic pivot notes to shift between A-flat major and minor scales. If I had to sketch out some simple harmony to go with this melody, I'd say maybe A-flat to F minor, B-flat minor 7 to D-flat minor to E-flat 7 to A-flat to D-flat to A-flat, or something like that. That would sound like this. What we get in reality is very different. A circle of fifths progression drifting farther and farther away from our home key, starting on D-flat, moving to G-flat, then B, then E7. Then we get a tritone sub resolution back to our tonic A flat with this B flat 7 sus to A major 7 sharp 11 to A flat cadence that sets up a return to the top of the piece with a simple 1 6 4 5 move. Altogether, it sounds like this. Implying notes from an A-flat triad over top of these extremely different harmonies not only introduces cool colors on top of each chord, like major sevenths and sharp elevenths, it also glues the phrase together. There's a common through line of this A-flat major sound all throughout the shifting harmony which keeps it grounded, the melody only giving way to notes outside the scale when it's absolutely necessary. Complex harmonic colors and a singable, natural sounding melody all with just three voices. This is a really cool piece of music. Melodies don't have to be complex to be good, but if you have these tools in your tool belt, it can open a ton of doors for your writing. There's really nothing better than a sophisticated melody that knows how to make a statement without giving too much away. Weave between different tonalities with grace and, more than anything, play with your expectations to create a musical journey that keeps you hooked all the way through. Looking at your melodies through a harmonic lens can open up new possibilities, whether it's establishing a chord progression with a minimal number of voices, floating above a chord progression, or smoothly pivoting from one key to another. At the end of the day, the melody is the most important part of a piece of music, so we should always be trying to think of ways to tackle our melody writing process better. I hope you enjoyed the video. Big thanks to patron Pack Attacks for requesting this game soundtrack. If you liked what you saw and you want to support the channel as well, check out my Patreon. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.